SAP 2000 provides an option that allows users to easily apply steady-state harmonic forcing functions over a range of frequencies. This allows for vibration analysis to be performed for structures subjected to oscillating equipment loads. In this tutorial, we will show how to apply the load from a vibrating pump onto a concrete slab. The pump weighs 400 pounds and has an operating speed from 0 to 4,000 RPM, or revolutions per minute. The loading that we are concerned with in this model is primarily vertical excitation, though we could also include horizontal loading if so desired. We start by defining additional load patterns. First, we will add a pattern for superimposed dead load. This will be for the weight of the pump. We will also add a steady state pattern that will be used to apply the vibrating pump load. The pump will be placed in the middle of the slab, so we select the middle joint and assign a joint load to the S-dead pattern of 400 pounds in the negative Z direction. We select the middle joint again. and this time assign a unit joint load for the steady state pattern. The actual magnitude of the load will be determined from the steady state forcing function we will define next. And although we assigned it with a negative sign, the sign does not matter in this case because we are applying an oscillating load and the forcing function will be applied in both directions. A right click on our joint allows us to verify our applied loads. To define the steady state function, we go to the define functions command and select steady state. We have a choice to either import a file or define it here and we will add a user-defined function. We will call our function pump, and in this table we input the different frequencies and their respective force amplitudes. These dynamic force amplitudes are typically provided by the equipment manufacturer and are calculated based on a small unbalance of the rotating mass. Here the force increases as the rotation speed increases. However, it is often just the opposite, where loads start high and decrease with RPM, and we will show this a bit later. Note again that our pump has an operating range of 0 to 4000 RPM. Since our data is in terms of RPM and not Hertz, we will select the RPM option and input our values. Our function is defined and the curve complete. This curve represents 
force amplitudes at every frequency. Next, we need to review our mass source. This will be used in generating our mode shapes. We will generate our mass from our load patterns. Here, we will use the dead pattern, which includes the self-weight mass, and the S-dead pattern, which includes the mass of the pump. We are now ready to define our load cases. We select modal and click the modify button. We will use eigenvectors for this analysis and because of the wide range of our pumps operating frequencies we will increase the number of modes to 50. Note that the mass source is that we just defined. If we had one primary operating speed say 3000 RPM, we might use the frequency shift to center our mode search at 50 Hertz. This would help to ensure that the found modes were closest to the excitation frequency. However, our speed can vary from 0 to 4000 RPM, so we will not shift the center and will simply let the program find the modes starting with the lowest frequency. Next, we select the steady state load case and click Modify. And then select steady state for the load case option. We will use zero initial conditions. Note that the solution type is direct, so modes are not actually required for the analysis solution but rather are used to help define the input frequencies, which we will show in a moment. The load applied will be our steady state load pattern with the pump function. We will leave the scale factor as one as the force amplitudes are already defined in the pump function. Checking the Show Advanced Load Parameters box, we can adjust the phase angle, which we will leave at zero, which means that the load will vary as the cosine. We can also alter the angle at which the horizontal loads are applied. But since our loading is only vertical, we will leave this as shown. The Frequency Step Data is where we specify the number of different oscillating frequencies the model should be subjected to. For each step specified, the program will pull off an amplitude from the pump function curve and subject the model to a steady state oscillation. For instance, if 50 Hz is one step, the amplitude will be selected from the curve and a steady state oscillator at 50 Hz with that amplitude will be applied. This data is specified in hertz, so we will input 0 to 68 hertz, which is approximately 0 to 4,000 RPM. We will specify 34 increments, which means that the program will sweep through 0 to 68 hertz, performing a steady state analysis at every 2 hertz. In addition, we want to ensure that a steady state analysis is also done at each modal frequency, which we can do by clicking the Set Additional Frequencies button. One, we will check the box to add modal frequencies. And two, we will check the box to add fractional deviations. This performs analyses on either side of the modal frequencies. We will enter 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and 0 0.05.
along with minus 0 0.01, minus 0 0.02, and minus 0 0.05. Lastly on this form, we will adjust the hysteretic damping. Note that this is hysteretic, which is displacement-based damping, and not viscous damping, which is based on velocity. We will adjust it down to 0 0.04. This lightly loaded system should have a relatively low level of damping. And 0 0.04 is equivalent to 2% viscous damping. We are now ready to run the analysis. After the analysis is complete, the first thing we will do is to verify that we requested an adequate number of modes. That is, we want to make sure that the frequency of our modes exceeds the maximum operating frequency of our pump. Displaying the first mode, we see that the fundamental frequency is 1.47 hertz. And if we display the last mode, mode 50, we see that the modal frequency is 160 hertz which exceeds the 68 hertz of our equipment. So we do have an adequate number of modes to capture the steady state response. While still in the display deform shape form, we can switch to the steady state load case. We now have the option to display the deform shape for any of the frequencies we requested. If we click through, you can see just how many are available. We can also display force results for any of the frequencies. Next, we will plot a graph of the response versus frequency generated by our steady state loads. The middle joint is joint 28, and we will select this joint. Going to the display show plot functions command, we highlight joint 28 and click the define plot functions button. Again, highlight joint 28 and click the modify button. And this time, change to acceleration. However, this graph is a bit confusing. Note how the acceleration just continues to increase with frequency. This is because the lower dominant modes are not being excited by our pump. There is very little dynamic amplification occurring because of the high frequency of our input motion. If we go back and look at our pump function curve at the fundamental mode of 1.47 hertz, the force is virtually zero and thus not driving any response. Now let's try a different steady state function and see how that might change the response. Returning to the define functions steady state command, let's define a new function called pump2. Instead of varying the force amplitude from 0 to 1.36 over the 4,000 RPM range, 
we will reverse the force amplitude so that it is 1.36 to 0. That is, the force amplitude will start out at 1.36 for 0 RPM and go to 0 at 4,000 RPM. This should excite the lower dominant modes. We will return to the load cases to adjust our steady state case to use our new pump 2 function. We can leave all the other settings as is. We can now rerun the analysis. Going back to the display plot functions, we can plot using either magnitude or phase angle. We previously used the phase angle set to zero, which was in phase with our steady state forcing function. However, this time we will use the magnitude option. Selecting our joint 28 acceleration response, we see that the high frequency response tends to zero and the peaks occur at some of the lower frequencies. That is, more dominant modes are now being excited. A quick comparison of the previous forcing function response shows just how different the behavior is. And notice how much larger the accelerations are for the pump 2 function. To review, SAP 2000 automatically applied harmonic steady state loading for all the requested frequencies from 0 to 68 hertz at every 2 hertz, plus all modal frequencies and frequencies close to the modes, and determined all the responses, such as forces, displacements, and accelerations. This concludes this tutorial on applying steady-state vibration loads in SAP 2000.